Okay, guys, we're back. Um, language. So, language. And I'm going to try to keep this as short and sweet as I can for you. So, page 80. Page 80, and you'll find those pages on Teams as well in the language channel. Uh, and it says reviewing encyclopedias. So I'm going to read to you the first part of this on page 80. We've talked about encyclopedias. We've talked about how to look up information in encyclopedias. And it says careful students are always on the alert for expressions like millions of years ago and others which show that the writer believes the false idea that life on earth just happened to evolve over a period of millions and millions of years. Even some writers for encyclopedias have been fooled by these thoughts because they do not accept what the Bible says. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. When you read articles which are evolutionary, okay, or means that they talk about evolution, which anything millions of years, okay, would definitely be that. Compare them to what the Bible says and find the truth. Then write the truth, not just what the encyclopedia says. So sometimes it does require a little bit of discernment, I guess you could say, but be careful when you are looking up information. You're going to see that, and we've talked about the fact that encyclopedias, no, we don't use the, the um, printed encyclopedias as often anymore, but even a computer or a, a website that has an encyclopedia, and be very careful of the sources that you use, okay, make sure that they are, it's a real encyclopedia, okay, not just some random information somebody threw up there on the internet, but be careful when it says millions of years. We know that the Bible says how the earth was created, and we, all, we know that the earth is so many thousands of years old but not millions of years old. And we've also talked in science about why we know that that's not true. Not just biblically, but scientifically, we know that that's not true, okay? Science um, proves that we can't date things to millions of years. It doesn't work that way, all right? So be careful when you're looking up information. Now, whoops, take my math book out. All right, so think A. Think A says to circle the most important word or name in each phrase using the volume shown in the blank before each number write the letter or letters of the volume that you would that you would use to find the information. Okay? We talked about that the volumes in an encyclopedia and these are just an example. But I'll try to get that there so you guys can see that. And this is something you may have to, if you can't print the page, then you may have to go in and uh, copy the sentences, circle, and then, you know, write in, the, write in the blanks over here what you're supposed to have. So if you look, and I'm going to hold this up so you can see it as we talk about it. Notice the encyclopedias. Notice what it says here. Try to get that centered. Number one. The year Thomas Jefferson was born. Well, what's the most important thing in this sentence? Well, obviously, and you're looking at the teacher's edition, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. So I'm going to be looking up information about who? Well, Thomas Jefferson is who I'm looking up the information about. Number two. So that would be in the JK volume. And notice what it says here. And that's it's not one to cooperate with me. Okay, so the JK volume right there all right some some volumes will be like you can see the C's there are split to the CA through CH the CI through CZ and then look down at J A and B J K Q R those have more than one letter included in those and there's encyclopedia. So topics could be anything from A through B's. Now, number two says how a bombardier beetle defends itself. How a bombardier beetle defends itself. Well, bombardier beetle is obviously the important phrase, okay, important words in that sentence because we need to look up information about bombardier beetle. But remember the A's and the B's are all in one volume. So you would write A to B in number two. 
And then number three, we'll do that one together and the rest you guys will do on your own. So number three, the population of San Antonio, San Antonio, Texas. Well, you're gonna look up San Antonio. Well, that's obviously gonna be in the S's. All right, S's, but look, the S's are split up into S through SN and then SO through S. Z. Okay, so be careful. One thing I wanted to point out to you on number one, and I did not mention this, which I think you guys already know this, but let's let's talk about it real quick. On number one, Thomas Jefferson. The reason we would look him up in the J through K is because we always look at people by their last name. In this case, it would be Jefferson. So the J, that's why we're looking him up in the J to K volume because we always look at people by their last name. All right, so make sure that you take time. Make sure that you take time and that you read the sentences carefully before you circle. And you just saw the teacher's edition, so you saw an example right there of what you're supposed to do. Circle the most important phrase and then tell me the volume that it's in. Okay, and the blank next to it. Um, I'm actually not going to ask you guys to do remember B, but I do want you guys to look at page 81, and I know some of you are going to say, well, I think we've already done page 80 and 81, and some of you may have, and if you have, that's wonderful. Um, if for some reason you missed something on that page or whatnot, I still want you to go back and do this for practice because you need that review. You need that review. We're going to be doing some review for a language quiz. And as a matter of fact, it might be a language test as well. I didn't leave my notes open. But anyhow, you're going to have a language quiz coming up, and then you're going to have a language test coming up as well. So and whether it's the quiz first, then the test, or the test, then the quiz, either way, you're going to have some, you need to make sure you pay close attention to anything that we review. So page 81, this is a section on Helen Keller, OK? Notice how she's listed. Her last name is first, bold capital letters, okay, Keller. Then her name, then her first name, and then her middle name. And the reason that her middle name is Adams, guys, is that it was very common for women to sometimes get like the mother's maiden name as a middle name, or it might just be a, a family name of some kind. So Helen Adams Keller, the dates and parentheses. Remember the dates and parentheses next to her name means her date, her year of birth, and her year of death. Sometimes it'll have the actual date date, like the full date, you know, of her, of the person's birth and death. So, so notice that. You'll also notice that there are headings for certain sections and that um, there's a couple things uh, in bold print that are important things, all right, in the passage. So you'll notice it says early life and education, and in this first column here, and then in the next column, you'll see another heading that says Worldwide Influence. And I'll show you that. You'll also see that Ann Sullivan and the word Braille are in uh, bold print as well. So if you want to know about more about what those things are, they're telling you to see other sources. Let me get that um, where you guys can see that better. Okay, so you'll see Early Life and Education and then worldwide influence. And you should see Ann Sullivan and Braille listed both in bold and it says C. Ann Sullivan, C. Braille. And the reason, or Sullivan Ann, because of course last name, first name. Um, but the reason it's telling you to do that, so it gives you more information about the person and then the other is a thing. And we did talk about Braille and we talked about who Ann Sullivan was. Now, you'll also notice on the this side of the page over here, I can get to it, there it is. These are books written by Helen Keller. And then down here are additional resources where you can go and find more information about Helen Keller. All right, and let me see if I can get that a tad bit closer so you guys can see it better. Okay, it tells you who wrote the book, the title of the book, So those are a few ways to look up more information about a person or a subject. 
Now, what are the guide words on this page? Okay, well, the only guide word, sometimes on a page, there's two. Um, you get the hang of this. Sometimes there's two guide words, and this is the bold, there it is, the bold terms or words at the top of the page. Notice because her name is here as well. But here is a guide word, and sometimes you'll have two. You'll have another one over here. And in this case, we just happen to have one. So that is a guide word. Okay, and the guide word is Keller, comma, Helen Adams. Then who wrote the article? All right, well, you're going to find the, the author of the article. Let me show you that as well. The author of the article, okay, right there, Wesley Leathers. That's the author. And then what, oh, under which heading would you find information about Helen's schooling? Okay, well, you're going to find that. Oh, okay, I've got to get, get the hang of this. Okay, putting this up to the screen. There we go. All right, early life and education. Okay, early life and education, that's where you're going to find it. And then the next one is, let me back up a little bit. Next one is, what are two cross references given in this article? The cross references was the Sullivan, comma, Anne in bold in the article, where it says C, Sullivan, Anne. And then the other one was C, Braille. Okay, those were the two cross references and you guys can see in bold right there and Sullivan and Braille and Sullivan was in the first paragraph Braille is in the second paragraph um, then it says what year was Helen Keller born what year did she die next to her name you're going to see dates in parentheses actually it's just years in this case in parentheses and that's your answer there 1880 and 1968 okay so I guess she would have been about 78 years old name one additional resource where you could read more about Helen Keller the additional resources that was at the bottom what we talked about a second ago where it says additional resources there at the bottom okay so there's a couple of them. Helen Keller, Sketch for a Portrait. Um, and then the other one was Helen and Teacher, The Story of Helen Keller and Ann Sullivan. So, so there's a couple different things there. Now those are the two pages we have for language today. I told you I would keep it kind of short, kind of simple. But those are our pages for language. Again, if you have any questions and think of anything, let me know this afternoon. Okay? So I'm going to get some things scanned in for you guys and sent over, and that way you guys will be ready to go. All right. I will see you guys this afternoon. Bye.